that you're here, and I hope that you feel that you've learned about blessing as we have uh, focused, and I pray not over-focused on blessing uh, for the last, uh, I don't even know how many weeks, it's been a good couple. Uh, so this is our final week on blessing, at least the, the focus of it. And uh, as we conclude, I think that there's an important uh, focus that remains. Uh, it is the blessing of God's calling, uh, God's calling on your life. And I don't want to have any uh, hands actually go up, but I wish in your minds that you could raise your hand or, or not uh, as I present this next question. Have you been called of God? Have you been called of God? And so many of us would think that it's a, a, it's a preacher thing, you know, uh, called is a... Is a and uh, I want to think, uh, have you been called of God? Because it makes a difference. Uh, if you're called of God, there's, God has something for you. And so, uh, have you thought about it? To help us with uh, defining and, and uh, steering you to the right answer, are you called or not? I looked in my favorite dictionary, Webster's 1828. Wouldn't it be cool to have a Webster's literally from 1828? Uh, the pages would probably crack. But I looked up the definition of calling, and the, the first three definitions, as you get to a definition, the first three uh, were that a calling is an invitation, a calling is a naming, and a calling is an occupation. Uh, as we apply these things spiritually, we see uh, the invitation uh, to salvation, really, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. Speaking of salvation, he says, Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are called by the gospel. The, a, a naming. We've been renamed we, a, a calling. We see that in Acts uh, chapter 11, verse 26. Uh, Acts 11, 26 says, uh, And when they had found him, uh, they brought him to Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year uh, they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples, listen to that part, the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So as they functioned and as they lived, uh, as they had come to salvation, they began to be called by the name Christians. Uh, they wore the name of Christ. And a calling is an occupation. We see that in the scripture uh, in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1. Paul says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation, or you could say the occupation uh, wherewith ye are called. Uh, we are called to uh, an occupation. So as we mentioned these three things, and I don't know uh, if in your mind you started with your hand up or down, uh, I wonder if, if anyone wants to change your vote. Uh, are you called of God? Have you been invited? Uh, and when I say uh, invited, I mean you've received the invitation. You know, you might be invited to something and you don't even open uh, that letter, you know. Uh, Paul actually says in Timothy, he says, uh, uh, my gospel. He has so received it that he's actually naming it my gospel. Have you received the gospel as yours? Are you saved? Uh, are you called by a new name? Uh, are you living in such a way uh, that it is clear to people that you have been called by a, a new name. You're no longer the same. And lastly, the occupation. Are you employed uh, in the service and in the work of what God has for you? In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, we're going to see the word every man. And we're going to look at this passage in a little bit more depth later. Uh, but he says in 1 Corinthians 7, 23 and 24, Ye are bought with a price... 
Be not ye the servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called uh, therein abide with God. Brethren, when he says that, he's saying, brothers and sisters, uh, if you've been called, uh, you, you have been called if you are a brother. Uh, so I want to look at these three things, these, these three levels of calling, uh, and consider, and that if you are a brother or sister in Christ, praise God, you have been called at some level. Uh, that's good news. I heard a preacher once, and I love this guy. Now, he would get so excited about his own preaching, uh, he would just get fired up and he'd say, Amen! If no one else is going to say it, Amen! Uh, and he would shout, and, and uh, if nothing else, he did rein in your attention when he would do that. Uh, but anyway, Amen. That's Amen worthy stuff. We have been called by God Almighty to salvation, uh, and I believe more, uh, if you will. Let's pray. Uh, dear Lord God, thank you for your goodness. Uh, thank you, God, for the calling that you placed uh, on our life, Lord, a calling uh, to be one with you, Lord, a calling to be renamed uh, and a calling to an occupation. Lord, help us to sort through and sort out uh, where we are at in uh, the process of your calling us. Uh, God, I believe you are calling. If there's one here today that has never received uh, the gospel, never received salvation uh, through the work of the cross, I pray that today they would hear that unmistakable calling, God, that you would have them be forgiven and right with you. Lord, for that one that maybe you're doing a work uh, to wear your name, Lord, and to look like you, Lord, uh, help that one with that. And Lord, for that one that you might be calling uh, to ministry, Lord, uh, of some sort. Uh, Lord, I pray that they would hear from you. We pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Uh, amen. Amen. The, the blessing of God's calling. I can think of uh, fewer things, a uh, few things that I would trade for those times where I felt God called me. Um, what would you trade to be called into relationship with, with God? Nothing on that one. Nothing. I would trade nothing. Paul says that he would be accursed, uh, that if Israel could be brought in, uh, I don't think I would. Uh, if the United States were to be cursed and hell bound, uh, I'm not trading my salvation for the United States. Uh, I will give my life to serve the Lord, but I would never want to be cursed, set outside of, of God so that another group can be brought in. Uh, that's on them, is it not? But what would you trade for a calling on God's life? That first calling to salvation uh, is uh, invaluable, but the, each of the following callings uh, are equally uh, precious. Both should be to you uh, and to our Lord as he's calling, calling, calling to you to a closer walk uh, with him. Uh, similar in expressing that intimacy uh, is in the scriptures we see that Jesus Christ uh, is shown to be the groom and you and I the bride. I don't know if there's any uh, ladies here that ask their husbands to marry them. I think it's totally fine. If my wife had asked me, I would have said yes. Uh, but traditionally, the groom uh, asks the husband. Uh, or, I'm sorry, the groom. Wow, what a world of trouble that can be. Traditionally, the groom asks the bride-to-be, will you be mine? And if she says yes, uh, she's given a new name. And then uh, for the church, when we say yes, I believe at some point we are given uh, uh, an occupation, something to do for Jesus. Uh, it would be terrible to be left out of the service of God. Did you know so much... Uh, importance and I don't know uh, so little attention drawn to God's calling uh, in life that the, the church we the, the name that we wear church uh, is ecclesia uh, and it literally means to be called out have you thought of it you're called by God and and if you can embrace this I believe it can be uh, game-changing in the way you live your life I want, I want
want us to really embrace that. And today we're going to look uh, at Peter's calling uh, as we uh, finish up a story in Luke chapter 5. Um, we, I don't know where you were called, but when we see the callings in the scripture, we have a, a, a tendency to make them special even more special than ours. We see Peter called from a fisherman and called to follow uh, Jesus Christ. But I believe it's entirely possible that some of the ways that God worked in calling you uh, to salvation, if we had a, a scripture that was needed to be completed, your name could have been in there. Whether it was uh, at a vacation Bible school or a Sunday school class, Maybe at a crusade. Uh, maybe you were in the woods uh, or in the city. Wherever you were, where God called you, your calling is no less special than the calling uh, of Peter that we're going to look at. In Luke chapter 5, last week we saw uh, that Peter was uh, finishing up cleaning his nets. Uh, Jesus said, come and sit in a boat and listen to me preach. And then after that, he says, uh, thrust out into the deep and let down your nets. So we're going to pick up right here as they have uh, en encompassed a great school of fish. Uh, and Jesus has more in mind for Peter than just the fish. Luke 5, verses 8 uh, to 10, we're going to read. When Simon Peter saw it, the, the school of fish that he's caught, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draw of the fishes which, were, which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And in a the other uh, passages in the Gospels, uh, Jesus says at this point, follow me. Follow me. Peter's calling. And you will see two callings of Peter uh, in the scriptures. And they are not in conflict. Uh, I believe actually they complement each other. Uh, whenever you see a discrepancy uh, in, in one of the other Gospels, well, gee, I thought Peter was with Nathaniel and he went and got his brother. And here we see Jesus uh, meeting Peter at the seashore. Uh, I think for today's message in particular, uh, it, there's, there's more calling. Uh, so there's not a discrepancy, but we see Jesus here calling Peter uh, from the one thing to the another. He says, you used to catch fish, now you'll catch men. And Peter, at the invitation of God's calling, uh, there needs to be a response. And in verse 11, it says, and when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Wow, praise God for that calling and praise God uh, for Peter's response. When I was younger, I believed that there were two callings, separate and um, not guaranteed for everyone. I believed that there was a calling to salvation uh, to everyone. But I did not believe that everyone was called to be a disciple. Uh, I don't know. Maybe because uh, I was just happy to be saved and wanted to live life the way I wanted. I didn't want to necessarily follow Jesus. I wanted to follow, wind, wind up in heaven. But I don't know that I wanted to necessarily follow Jesus and stay away from that or, and do this. Uh, but soon after, the, the verse that led me to that thought is found in Matthew uh, 16 verse 24 Matthew 16 verse 24 then said Jesus unto his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me in my young mind I thought to myself okay I'm saved and here Jesus says if any man will come after me let him take up his cross and follow me. So I'm like, sure, cool. It's an option. I can receive heaven, uh, live like the devil, and wind up with Jesus. Or I can receive 
salvation and follow Jesus uh, and take up a cross. I, you know, we'll look at that in a bit, taking up a cross. But we're going to see that there really is not a separation. It's more of a continuance of the calling of God to salvation and to following. We, we see uh, Paul in Corinthians, he says to that group, um, there is no such thing uh, as, as uh, uh, the casual Christian. I'm saved, but in, in regard to my following Christ, uh, I'm a little bit casual about that. In Corinthians, we see the casual Christian is called the carnal Christian. It, it's not a distinction and it's not an option. Uh, this thought uh, continues uh, on in Matthew 28, verse 19, the Great Commission. Uh, th with clarity, we see that there is not uh, a, a calling to salvation uh, and then do with uh, that as you will. Uh, we're called to follow Jesus Christ. In Matthew 28, verse 19, he says to his disciples, he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Uh, some of your, your Bibles, when you see that word uh, teach, go ye therefore and teach, it means to make disciples. We are not called to go out uh, w with a list. Uh, I'm trying to fill this list up with names of people that said they'll pray a prayer. That is not... Uh, the interest and the, the commission that God gives to the disciples. He says, I want you to go out and preach gospel and make more followers. Not names on a list that said they got saved. He says, I want you to bring those folks uh, an invitation, a calling of God invited. And as they receive that and it's their gospel, uh, I want you to uh, let them know that they are called uh, to uh, a new name. Uh, and, and they're going to be called by a new name. You know, you're supposed to wear the name of Jesus Christ wherever you go. Um, and w what a blessing it is. If you will not uh, identify with Christ, you're missing part of God's calling on your life. Everywhere you go, led and, and following and used of God. We were in a, a gun store yesterday and I was surprised we wound up there in a way. We had driven a half hour towards uh, who knows where up on uh, 84. Someone may have been on. We were, uh, we were smoking with Chris. That was the name of the barbecue place. Smoking with Chris. We weren't literally smoking. Paul, is my water over there? You want to throw it? Praise the Lord. Um, smoking with Chris, we were, we were there, we enjoyed the barbecue, and after the barbecue, we had the afternoon uh, unexpectedly, and we were like, let's go to a gun shop. We just wanted to see what was there, and we found, I, I'd just spoken my phone, gun shop, and it pulled one up seven minutes away. Who knows why we were going, but there we are, and we wound up there, and I wind up talking to this guy. He's a big, muscular guy, and he's got a really big gun uh, on his on his side. And and we're talking, and I see the, the trail part of uh, Psalm 23, verse 4. Uh, Yea, though I walk through the valley. So fitting for a big guy with a gun. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, uh, for thou art with me. And we got talking about the Lord. Um, and he called over a uh, uh, an ex-marine, um, just tough, tough guys. We got talking about the Lord. And I believe that God's calling on your life does not stop at, at salvation. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you to follow throughout the day to places. I, we wound up in this gun shop, the four of us, uh, in tears, praising God, testifying of how God had closed the hole in his daughter's heart and how God had led him to a mission field 
um, to serve. Uh, he was in the field, and some guy got in his face with a gun, held it, held it, said, "I'm going to kill you." And he said to his translator, he said, uh, "Go ahead and tell him to pull the trigger." <laughs> and his translator said, "I'm not telling him that." He said, "Tell him, pull the trigger." He says, "I'm here by God's design." And if God, uh, if it's my time, then I'm getting promoted. But if I'm not, God will protect me. There's, there's a confidence as we go through life in God's calling. Yes, called to salvation, but walking in step with God, understanding there's a calling on my life from God. This is one reason there should be a terror of sin in your life. Can you imagine if you're called to that particular situation and someone's got a gun in your face and you've been miserably lost and sinning uh, unconfessed? At that point, I don't think I'd say pull the trigger. I might be there because of my sin. But as we live life in a, a, a following Jesus, there's a confidence that comes, that come what may. The position that I find myself now, I am not just able, but called by God here. And I can get through this with the power of God. We need to, we need to understand this. When we see uh, in that Matthew um, 16, I'm, uh, let me get back to it because I don't want to mess it up. 1624, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Who, who would want this, really? And yet, why, as a Christian, do we not want this? If, if, if God has called us to it, as Jesus Christ was obedient to, to a cross, why would we not? And yet, I've never read this verse and said, oh, praise the Lord, there's a cross for me. Uh, we don't really want to be uh, uh, on a cross. We don't really want to be uh, maybe even identified with a cross, but he's called you to a cross. Will you receive it? Wow, those guys are loud. <laughs> Paul... Paul says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 20, he says, I am crucified with Christ, and nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul identifies with a cross. I am crucified with with Christ. In Galatians 6, verse 14, same book, he says again there, but God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. There is a calling for you after salvation to a cross. And it is not a cross to be feared or, or dreaded or even shunned. But as Paul uh, is rejoicing and goes farther to say, I will glory in nothing except the cross. As he identifies with his Savior in obedience and, and identifies uh, with Jesus as something being put to death. Why would you and I shy away from a cross of obedience? Jesus Christ had every right, uh, and as we, we look probably in John in chapter 12, we're heading there. Jesus Christ, the spotless lamb, the righteous one of God, was going to hang on a cross and be shamed. He was going to hang on a cross and become sin, the one who knew no sin. But for you and for me, the cross does not represent the wrath of God. Jesus 
war, the wrath of God, as, as God's wrath was poured out on him on that cross, he had every reason to uh, dread the cross. Why do you and I dread uh, the idea of a cross? If any man will follow me, let him take up his cross. It doesn't really sound appealing. Take up a cross and follow me. But for you and I, that cross, uh, as we walk and follow with Jesus, that cross is there for you and I to put something on it that he has called us to put on it and nail it there. And trust me, it's, it's not to your benefit. It was in your way. Take it out of the way and nail it to the cross. In John 12, I want to look further uh, at the, the idea of following Jesus uh, and, and the death of some things, uh, the cross, the connection to the cross. In John 12, verse uh, 23, we see Jesus referring to the cross when he says, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, The hour is come, the Son of Man should be uh, glorified. That's the cross. The hour has come. Now he goes on to explain to you and I and really to, to call us. He says in verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, he will, uh, him will my father honor. As we read this and as we see this illustration, uh, some of you may have missed it yesterday at, at breakfast in Bible. If the cross, that crucifixion that God has called you to, is to let go of something and, and surrender it, uh, even uh, let it die. Uh, if you picture a kernel of, here's, they say a kernel of wheat, uh, but for our minds in New England, if you picture an egg corn, uh, have you ever seen an egg corn? Uh, when it falls from the tree, it's really nothing. Uh, and that's our life, uh, an acorn. Uh, and if that acorn had a will and said, I'm not going to be buried in the ground, that acorn would rot and, and die just like that. Here, when, when he says, uh, he that loveth his life shall lose it, if you will not take up your cross and follow him, if you will not take your personality and your thoughts and those things that you cling to and allow them to be buried uh, in the ground, surrendered uh, to God, uh, that the life that he's intended and that life that leads to uh, eternal value is will never be. If you will not take up your cross and f if you will not obey and surrender, you're just a nut, I guess. Uh, I guess it's better to be a tree. You're just a nut. When you, when you put it in the ground and surrender it, uh, you, you've taken up your cross, uh, that, that husk cracks open and life springs from that acorn. And there's growth. And he goes on to say that the, that produces more seeds. Your calling is beyond salvation. Your calling is to the surrender, uh, as he says here, the, the cross. Will you take up your cross and follow him? I hope that we can come to grips. I hope even if we could revote, and you said earlier that you did not think you were called. I trust that today you will think and see clearly that you are called by God. You're called to salvation. You're called to wear the name of Jesus Christ. And you're called to a new occupation. And we see again from Paul uh, in Acts chapter 13. He's met the Savior there on the road when he fell off his horse. He was knocked to the ground. He's been uh, wearing the name Christian. He's identified with, with the body here in uh, Acts 13. He's gathered with them. They're worshiping together. And now he receives the third of the callings that I want to look at today. 
in verse 13, chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, uh, that is called Niger, and Lucius and of Cyrene, and Menea, uh, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. I don't know if, how quick you could pull up verse 2 and 3. Acts chapter 13, verse 2 and 3. Praise the Lord. It says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, uh, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands upon them, and sent them on their way. Paul was clearly saved at this point. Paul was clearly wearing the name of Christ. He's actually in Antioch, where they were called Christians. And then Jesus, uh, God had a separate work uh, through the Holy Spirit. He says to the elders, separate me or set aside Paul and Barnabas. I've called them to something special. And I believe that this calling is not so small that 98% of the church are called to save. Maybe a, another percent are called to wear the name and a few select are called to uh, an occupation. Not at all. I think God's threefold calling is to all. He wants you to know that you are called, and we get those callings as we follow Christ. Are you following? There's a possibility that where you are now, you're thinking, God did not call me here. If he called me here, I would be doing better. I could be, uh, you might be feeling like you're barely hanging on. Uh, this, your situation, I talked to somebody today, and there's just a situation after a situation and it seems like how do you, how can you get through all that if you knew that God had called you to it I believe maybe you could get through it but you're wondering did God indeed call me to this or is this my own doing have I sinned uh, wound up here uh, and now everything's off uh, there can't be another calling and my life is shipwrecked Paul addresses this thought uh, in 1 Corinthians 7. Uh, he uses the word uh, eight or nine times in, a, in about seven verses or so. And he addresses this thought to you, uh, dear one, that is in a situation that you're wondering, uh, can I get through this? Has God called me to this? Or am I just, have I screwed stuff up and here I am? In 1 Corinthians 7, uh, verse 15, following, Paul is, is really boiled Christianity down to uh, this life. He's not high and lofty. He's really hitting people where they live. And we're going to pick it up in the middle of, of, of someone having problems even in their marriage. Uh, he says, but if an unbelieving depart speaking about husband and wife are in a relationship and there's a believer and an unbeliever. And he's wondering, the, the unbeliever, the, the believer rather, is wondering, should I leave my spouse? Uh, has God called me to this, to leave? He says, no. He says, but if an unbelieving depart, let him depart. Uh, a brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. So if, if you're in a situation and he says your husband leaves you or your wife leaves you, um, let it alone. God has called you to peace. But then he continues to, to go on to that, that saved person about every area of life. He says in verse 16, for, for what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? But as God hath uh, distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk, 
and so ordain I and all of the churches. God says to the husband and wife, and those, those situations can be brutal, living in seemingly purgatory uh, with that one uh, that you once loved. God, he's saying, Paul is saying here that as you've been called, as you've been saved, there is no need for you to leave that spouse that is unsaved if, if they'll have you stay. God, he says, who knows, God might use you to save your husband or your wife. He goes on to say uh, that if that one that, that is uh, unsaved won't stay, and they leave and they depart, Paul says, leave it alone. Uh, it, that, that is what it is. He goes on to say now about uh, where God's found you in, in your occupation. Or actually here, he starts with the circumcision. Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. He's saying you don't have to become Jewish. And you don't have to become un-Jewish. Where God's called you, there he's called you. Circumcision, in verse 19, is nothing. And uncircumcision is nothing. But the keeping of the commandments of God... Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayest be free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's freeman. Likewise also he that is called being a freeman is Christ's servant. Even to the slave. Can you imagine... A slave, and I would present to you that that is the hardest situation uh, to find yourself in. A slave in Rome had no rights; you you were property. And Paul says here, were you called of God into relationship with God the Father? Were you were you saved out of that spot? He's saying, I'm, I'm not telling you to run away. I'm not telling you to, to rebel. If you've been called, he says, therein abide. If you can be free, then be free. You'll have more liberty to serve God. But where God's gospel and grace found you, he's saying, therein abide, we're going to read. He, and we saw this earlier, ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men, brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. And therein is the answer for, for our calling. God is going to sort it out. If you're a slave, uh, God will abide with you in the midst of it and will do a work in continuing your calling. If you're free, you're not really free. You're God's servant and God's uh, child. Abide there. I don't know where you're at in your uh, calling. Are you saved today? Have you heard the gospel and responded to it? Are, are you, you've been invited by a calling of God. Have you changed your name? Are you called by a new name? Called Christian. I'm called child of God. And have you been called to a new occupation? I believe that if we'll follow Christ as he's commanded, not option, but commanded, uh, all three of these things will come about and there will be a blessing for you. Let's pray. Uh, Lord God, I pray that you would be near to us. Lord, and I trust that you will be near to us as we are near to you, Lord, as we follow. God, I pray that for someone here today, they might hear the calling uh, to salvation, Lord, the gospel that Jesus Christ uh, lived a perfect life, that he died on a cross, uh, he wore our sins and rose again three days out of the tomb. Lord, I pray that that invitation would be heard. Lord, an invitation to wear your name and be called Christian, Lord, to live like a Christian. Uh, Lord, I pray that that would be heard and received by someone today. And God, a calling on our life, Lord, that wherever we may be, Lord, whether it's in a dentist's office or a school, or whether it's in a, an office or a factory, uh, Lord, let us uh, be occupied uh, with your uh, occupation, Lord, of serving you. Uh, God, do a work 
in our midst. Uh, help us to realize we are called of you. In Jesus' name. out the elements uh, and then we'll pray for again for the element and we'll take together so let me pray thank you God for Jesus Christ and for that cross Lord uh, thank you for his obedience to you and that obedience Lord that brought salvation and a right standing with you uh, God bless these uh, symbols and these reminders in Jesus name Eleven twenty three says, For as I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he uh, in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks he brake it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. And they take up the bread. Corinthians 11 after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is a new testament in my blood of this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me 